don't want to take a lot of your time tonight. Give me about 20, uh, 25 minutes of your time. And I want to share uh, a message uh, that came up in my heart um, over the, it actually was birth over this weekend. Um, I had a, an opportunity to, uh, to share the gospel with, uh, in, in fact, it was a family member. Um, and what, and what I spoke about in our conversation and even what I spoke about to another individual, uh, in a phone conversation last night came up twice. So I felt like the spirit of the Lord would have me talk about this tonight. And I want to share with you what I, what I shared with this individual. And unfortunately, we live in a time in the church age where this has to be addressed. And, I, and I'm going to paint a picture of why we have to address this. I want to talk about counting the cost of the cross. Again, counting the cost of the cross. Again, I'm going to welcome everybody to the broadcast here on Facebook Live and you guys that are watching this via by YouTube. Again, if you're new to the broadcast, let us know below either in the comments of either Facebook or YouTube uh, and we will we will welcome you accordingly and we appreciate you as well. So Matthew 16, guys, Matthew 16 is where I want to go tonight is where we're going to lay the foundation of this. And then we're going to talk about counting the cost of the cross. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, or Caesarea Philippi, however you want to pronounce that, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, or your translation may say Hades, shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we see here there is revelation knowledge being revealed by Peter, who he begins to understand the fullness of who Yeshua is. He understands that he's not just another rabbi. He's not just another teacher. He's not just another prophet. But he reveals that he believes that he is the Messiah, the Son of Man, the Savior, the one who's been foretold to come. And Jesus, as a result of this revelation from Peter, he affirms him and, and changes his name gives him a name change, and begins to reveal to him the authority he now has in Christ. He says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. By the way, this revelation is available to all of us. The revelation to bind and loose. Okay? Verse 20. Keep all this in the back of your mind, because I'm going somewhere tonight with this. And then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the that he was Jesus the Christ or the anointed one. From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that now listen to this ready clean out your ears and from that time notice there was a revelation first of who Jesus was that he was the Messiah, that he was the anointed one, that he was the Christ, that he was the son of the living God, that he was the son of man. Come on, he was the king of kings and, and the Lord of lords. So that revelation had to come first. Sorry, guys, I dropped my phone there. So that revelation had to come first. And then watch the next, immediately after that, your Bible says in verse 21, and from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. Somebody say he was appointed to suffer many things. Watch this. From the elders and the chief priests the scri and the scribes 
and be killed and be raised from the third day. Somebody say he was appointed to suffer from those even in the church. Are you hearing me tonight? All right. And listen to this, verse 22. The same guy who spoke up, Peter, who's always the one that stands out, the one who's got the loudest voice, the one who comes forward, the one who's got the revelation knowledge. Peter stands up. He pulls Jesus aside from the disciples and begins to rebuke him, saying, listen to this, quote, he's speaking to Jesus, right? He says, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And But he turned, and so Jesus turns to Peter and says, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Somebody say he was not mindful of the things of God, but he was mindful of the things of men. Oh, this is all going to come together right here. All right? Now watch verse 24. Context is everything. Context is everything. I know we live in a time where everybody wants to take things out of, we want to take a scripture and pull it out of context and use it as an ammunition here. And we want to pull this scripture out and use it and quote it here for something over here. But we, the law of interpretation is, is context. Here a little, there a little, line on line, precept on precept. Okay, watch this. In the context of everything I just shared with you, verse 24, uh, Matthew 16, 24. So that you had this, watch this. I, I, I'm, you're going to hear me repeat this because Jesus even said this. He, uh, many times he said, again, I say unto you, and again, I say unto you. I want you to catch the sequence of this. Number one, there's a revelation of who he is. Number two, there. Jesus pulls them aside and tells them that there must be a suffering and it's appointed. Number three, watch this. G, uh, Peter begins to think he's real spiritual and he's a real mature disciple now because after all, he's the one that got the revelation of who the Messiah was. So he pulls the Messiah to the side and tries to rebuke him but it backfires on him. He, he gets called Satan and, and is told by Jesus that his intents, his thoughts. Now listen, he, Peter had good intentions. He didn't want Jesus to be, he didn't want him to suffer persecution. He didn't want him to go through some bad times. He didn't want him to be uh, ridiculed and spat on and whipped Come on, and beaten and scourged and crucified. He didn't want that to go. So there was nothing wrong uh, with what Peter's intentions were. But watch this. But they were not of God. They were of men. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to plow in a minute, guys, if you just hang on for a second. Because this is the problem we got in the church today. Verse 24. Now let me go to, to Matthew 16, 24. So he had all this happen, and then Jesus says to his disciples, so now he goes and he pulls everybody in. That's us. And he says, if anyone, are you listening? If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Somebody say deny himself and take up his cross. Somebody say take up his cross and follow me. And then he goes on, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to 
to his works. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word you've given me tonight. I pray that this word will go forth and not return void. I'm asking that you would anoint my lips, anoint my speech, anoint my words to go forth and speak the oracles of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be as a two-edged sword and it would pierce the hearts of those that are listening via by YouTube, via by Facebook, here live or by the replay of this. I pray that God, you would give me the message in which I need to preach to tonight. You would give me the words to articulate, and I pray that the Holy Spirit have His way, and you would be glorified, Jesus, through this message in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, listen, here's what I'm trying to, this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me through this message I want to share with you tonight. Jesus is reiterating here, guys, that listen, if you're going to be a disciple of me, if you're going to follow me, it is not going to be, number one, it's not going to be an easy road. It's not going to be a road paved, come on, with, with, uh, uh, with simplicity, with acceptance, with glorification. It's not going to get you, come on, on the front page of some magazine. It's not going to give you recognition. It's not going to get you popularity. If you're looking for all this, then you're following the wrong Jesus. He's telling you, and listen, why am I preaching on this tonight? Because the modern church culture today has portrayed a gospel in which we can come to an altar we can say a little prayer with somebody, how be it a pastor, how be it a leader, how be it, how be it a, an evangelist that leads someone to an altar call and everyone repeats this prayer and we say this nice, eloquent prayer, okay? And then, and then there goes Siri interfering in my message again. So, uh, so then we, uh, we have this going on. So then we have portrayed this gospel in which they say yes to Jesus, and then suddenly their life is going to be so extravagant. They're going to become famous. They're going to become rich. They're going to become popular. They're going to become, un they're going to become notable. They're going to... Um, they're going to immediately step out of their problems and it's going to be paradise. They're never going to have any sufferings. They're never going to be persecuted. They're going to be liked by everybody. They're going to be the most popular people. Everybody's just going to roll out the red carpet for them. Everybody's going to want to hug them. Everybody's going to want to embrace them. See, you see this, even this weekend, the Lord allowed me to minister to even a family member in which I reiterated multiple times, you can't expect to live for the devil for 38 years, sowing and reaping of his kingdom, and say yes to Jesus in one moment, wake up tomorrow, and expect the harvest of what you've reaped for 38 years to be wiped out, and then everything is paved gold for you and silver lining for you. And then all your problems are going to go away. All your bills are going to be paid. All your debts are going to be canceled. All the repercussions of what you've sowed that has in times past. The wages of sin is death. Okay? But guys... You may laugh at this today, but you would be surprised of how many people that contact me, people that email me, people that talk to me, people that I talk to in the street, people I talk to in restaurants. Their perception of Christianity is a self-help program and which can help them become a better them that they can gain back their self-esteem, that they can do better in life, that they can make more money, that they can become more popular, that they can become a somebody because they were nobody. So they've, they've almost as if they've accepted Jesus as a stepping stool so they, that they can achieve what they've always wanted to achieve and 
for some reason, maybe the devil wasn't given everything that they wanted. So now they've turned to Jesus and said, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to give Jesus a trial. Like he's, you know, like he's some type of, um, you know, trial and error. You know, we, I, you know, I've watched these infomercials and they're like, you know, try out this or order this today. And there's a 30 day free trial. You can try that. You, there's a mattress. You can buy a mattress that you can sleep on. You and your spouse can sleep on and you can rest on and you can lay in it for, for 29 days. And if you're not happy and you're not satisfied, just ship it back with no, no strings attached. They won't charge you for it because you weren't happy with it. So you can ship it back. Friends, that's not how the gospel goes. If you think you're going to give Jesus a try for 29 days and on the 30th day, you're just going to walk away. You're just going to, you know, I'm going to just box him back up and ship him back to heaven where he came from because I want to go back and do things my own way. So here's what's interesting. Let me get back to the text. In Matthew 16, it's interesting how Peter was all about getting the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He was all about loosing and binding. He was all about that the kingdom of hell would not prevail against the king against the church. All Peter was woohoo hollering, he was shouting, he was clapping. He was he was in an amen corner for Jesus. But the moment that Jesus began to shift gears and began to tell them that there will be suffering there will be persecution, and that even their rabbi, their Messiah, the one whom they've forsaken all to follow, will be killed. Oh, hold on here now. Then the whole scene shifted. Then Peter's countenance changed, had the nerve to pull Jesus to the side from all the other disciples, rebuke him, and say, oh, far be it from you, Lord. This, this won't happen to you. After all, don't they know who you are? Don't, you, they, don't they know you're Jesus? Don't, you, don't they know that you're the Messiah? Don't they know that you're the anointed one? Don't they know that you were foretold by the prophets of old? Don't they know that you cast out devils and lay hands on the sick and you heal the brokenhearted? After all, this is why, this is why the Lord anointed you to do this. And you, uh, you, you, you open blind eyes and you set the cap is free don't they know who you are now that now jesus there's streets of gold waiting for you there's jasper there's crowns waiting for you there's a throne waiting for you there's angels singing holy 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 to you all these things are waiting for you far be it from you lord that you would have to suffer anything and guys it is written for a reason because the student is not above the master or above the teacher does your bible not say if the lord suffered persecution how much more will those of the household of the master and then this is why guys he then shifts gears and says listen he goes from a private conversation to a public conversation, and he addresses every one of them, as I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is addressing us tonight. And he's saying, if any of you desire to follow after me, this is what Jesus is saying, let him deny himself. Uh-oh, so much for that. So much for, the, for your recognition. So much for your pride. So much for your platform. So much for your prestige. So, so much for your agenda. Your, come on, somebody. you got to deny yourself. I don't know what you're in this thing for. But your Bible says you were bought with a price. Paul said, it is no longer I that liveth. But Christ that lives in me. I've been crucified. That's what he says. I've been crucified by Christ. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh is for the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The word says you were bought with a price. Therefore, you are not your own. You live for him. 
Have we forgotten this? Come on. There was a generation that understood this. But I'm sorry we, that we live in a generation now that is preaching a different gospel. So he says, if you're going to follow after me, you're going to deny, you're going to have to deny yourself. You're now working for, come on, you're working for Yeshua. You're working for the master. You're working for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You're not working for you. I know that if somebody doesn't call you by your title, it freaks you out. Heaven forbid somebody fail to call you apostle or prophet or prophetess or evangelist, so-and-so. Heaven forbid they actually call you by your name. Heaven forbid they forget who you were. Come on. And then he says, not only are you going to deny yourself, but you're going to take up your cross and you're going to follow after me. What does it mean by take up your cross? It means as Jesus took up his cross, and began to die to himself. It wasn't a it wasn't a one-time event, guys. It wasn't a moment. The moment that Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not mine, but yours be done. He was already dying. He was dying to himself. He was praying great drops of blood because of the intercession. He was dying when he went into to Rome, when he was put on trial, when he put the 39 stripes on his back, when they shoved the crown of thorns on his head, when they whipped him at the post, when they spat on him, when they ripped out his beard, when they lied on him, when they ridiculed him. What was happening? He was dying to himself. He was taking up his cross and he was following the will of the Father. Doesn't sound anything like modern Christianity, now does it? Wait a minute, you mean I'm not going to get... I'm not going to get famous. I'm not going to get wealthy. I'm not going to get notoriety. I'm not going to be a somebody. I'm not going to get a huge following on social media. He says, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Listen, guys, if you, my God, help me, Lord, preach this. If you think that when you say yes to Jesus, that you're going to keep living the same life that you lived and say that you have Jesus, then you've got another thing coming. This is not the gospel that I read about. See, but this is the this is the portrayal of the gospel we have today. Just come as you are and leave the same way you did even after you said yes to Jesus. So there was no denying yourself. There was no repentance because we can't even repent anymore because that's a cuss word in the church today. We don't need to repent. We just need to change our mind. It's all about just change your thinking, change your mind. Even though Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and says, repent and turn from this wicked and perverse generation. But we're, we're teaching a whole generation they don't need to repent. They don't have to change their life. They can keep smoking weed. They can keep drinking alcohol. They can keep living promiscuous. They can keep sleeping around. They can keep cussing everybody out. They can keep beating their spouse. They can keep kicking the dog. They can keep cussing. Come on. They can keep stealing. They can keep... They can just be the same person they were, except for hallelujah, they got their little heaven, their their little, uh, their little their ticket to heaven punched. I'm saved by grace, hallelujah, because I got my card punched because I went up to the front of the line with everybody else and I repeated a prayer after so-and-so and they gave me a little brochure and I went home and I yada, 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 and I read that and I threw it in the trash and I went back to the club on Friday night, hallelujah, because I got my grace card and, you know, the preacher told me the grace is so strong that it's going to keep me out of hell. Oh, is this too hard for you? Come on. 
I'm sure you can turn the channel and somebody will tickle your ears for you. But this is not what Jesus did. This is not the gospel that Jesus preached according to my Bible. He said, whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. In other words, he's saying, guys, if you're going to come and you're going to follow after me and you have already made up your mind that you're going to keep living the same life you had before you said yes to Jesus, you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose it. You're not going to gain anything. Come on. You're going you're gonna to keep getting beat up by the devil. You're going to keep losing. You're going to keep losing the victory. You're going to keep, you're not going to get the peace that you, you're seeking for. You're not going to get the victory that you're looking for because you're choosing to hold on to what God is telling you to take up your cross and die daily. You know what that means? Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, I die daily. I was asked this question this weekend. How do you do it? How do, you not, how do you not lose your temper? How do you not look at certain things that you used to look at? How do you not do these certain things? Friends, here's how you, I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, I do it the same way Paul did. Every single day I wake up and I willfully choose to take up my cross and follow after him and deny myself. That means I have to get in the word. That means I have to get in his presence. That means I have to get in his, in, in prayer. That means I have to crucify myself. I have to put to death the mortal deeds of the flesh. That means when I get angry, I have to crucify it. That means if I begin to desire to try to lust, it means I got to crucify it. It means I got to go to the cross. Listen, if Paul said, I die daily, then why are you listening to some preacher that tells you that you don't need to do that? You don't need to come to the altar. You don't need to repent. You don't need to cleanse yourself of the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. You don't need to mortify the, the moral deeds of the flesh. You don't need to put off the old man and the sins thereof and put on the new man according to, the, uh, to Christ. Why would you listen to someone who's teaching you this? But we are because our ears want to be tickled. We want to be, uh, we want to be comforted in our sins and not convicted of our sins. All right, listen to this. What profit is in a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Now, again, this is in the context of following Jesus. We've always used this in the context of, well, look at the Britney Spears and look at the uh, fill in the blank, the Hollywood stars and the celebrities and the musicians. They're out there gaining the whole world and they're losing their soul, brother. But if you put this in the context of what it was being preached, he's talking to disciples. What profit is it to gain the whole world? What profit is it for you to be on TBN? What profit is it for you to have a million followers on Facebook? What profit is it for you to have the biggest stage presentation to be on charisma magazine to be the, to be a somebody come on in the the charismatic church or the pentecostal church or the protestant church or the baptist church or the the lutheran church or the pres or the presbyterian church or the whoever your denomination what profit is it to gain all these things but lose your soul because you willfully chose to embrace a false gospel that has been teaching you that everything's good, brother. It's all good. It's all going to be smooth. It's all going to be great. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. Listen to this. Let me give you another verse. Go with me to the book of 2 Timothy. And I'm getting ready to close with this, guys. Been on here 30 minutes. 2 Timothy. Let me turn here real fast. 2 Timothy. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 10. But you have, listen to this, this is the Apostle Paul. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. 
and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now that's powerful right there. So let me tell you this. When you, and this is what I told this individual this, this, this weekend. I said, I'll tell you the truth. When I wasn't serving God, I didn't have these problems. I hardly had any issues. I had all kinds of friends. I had party buddies. I don't remember being sick very often. I don't remember any persecutions. I don't remember any of these trials. But I was all the I was already had a ticket punch and I was on my way to hell. I was already on my way to the kingdom of uh I was already on the way to king to the kingdom of hell. I was already I was already come on all my way there living for the devil. But the moment I said yes to Jesus, that's when the persecutions begin to come. That's when the accusations begin to come. That's when the lies came. That's when the slander came. That's when the offense came. That's when the abandonment came. That's when the rejections came. That's when the trials came and the tribulations came and the, the infirmities came and, the, and this and that and this. This is what Paul's telling Timothy here. He said, you've carefully followed my doctrine. He said, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my love, my perseverance. But then he gets to the next verse and he says, you've also followed my, perse my persecutions and my afflictions. But I love what he says, but the Lord delivered me out of them all. See, I don't know about you guys, but I would rather be on the side of God. And you, you may be listening to this to say, well, why would I want to give my heart to the Lord and go through all that? Because here's the key, guys. Life is going to throw you some stuff, and I would rather be on the side of God who's going to deliver me out of them all, come on, somebody, than be serving a devil who, when I do go through stuff, all he's going to do come on, is give me a shovel to dig my own grave. Come on, somebody. Watch this. Verse 12 of 2 Timothy 3. Yes, and all. Somebody say all. Somebody said that includes me. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Come on, put that one Go ahead and underline that one. Put that on a bumper sticker. Put that on your refrigerator. Put that on your mirror in your bathroom. I bet you, you put that on a plaque and put it on your on, on your desk at work. That what an inspirational verse that is. But Paul said, This is a truth that you need to know tonight, friends. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In other words, he said you will, not you might, you could, you should. He said you will. Do I got any Christ followers tonight? Do I got anybody saying I want to follow after Jesus? I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to do what's right. I want to do what God's called me to do. Well, mark it down, friends. Get ready. If you've not been in it or not in it, you will suffer persecution. Now look at the next verse. Again, what did I say earlier? Context is everything. Isn't it interesting that consequently he goes from all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Then look at the next verse. Look in your Bible, 2 Timothy 3, 13. What's it say? But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Whew. You know, oh my goodness, thank you, Holy Ghost. Do you know why he's saying that? He's telling Timothy in essence, when you see these preachers rising up, you're, there's going to come a day in the last days, Timothy. You're going to see preachers rise up. You're going to see pastors rise up. You're going to see churches rise up. 
you're going to see voices rise up and they're going to begin to preach another Jesus. They're going to preach another gospel and it's going to be a self-help gospel. It's going to be a self-improvement gospel. It's going to be a better you gospel. It's going to be a better health gospel. It's going to be a promotion only gospel. It's going to be an elevation only gospel. It's going to be a, a mountaintop only gospel. It's going to be a you're going to soar with the eagles every day gospel. It's going to be you're never going to have any bad things gospel. You're going to be loved by everybody gospel. It's going to be a gospel that's going to teach you how to be everybody's friend, not to offend anybody, how to grow your church, how not to run people off from your church. Come on, somebody. How to, oh, come on, somebody. What he's trying to tell you is that if you, when you begin to see those people come up, when they begin to rise up in the last days and they begin to come behind pulpits, they begin to feel Christian television, and you begin, if they never tell you that persecution is going to come of the gospel, if they begin to tell you that there, it's never going to cost you something, if they begin to tell you that you're not going to have a target on your back, if they begin to, if they begin to, uh, to tell you that you're never going to be disliked by anybody. If they begin to tell you that your family may not, will never disown you, you'll never offend anybody. Everybody's going to love you. Friends, then I'm going to tell you something. Run. Run from that gospel. Run from that teaching because that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm going to tell you something. There ain't a single friend that I ever ran with in times past. When I before I said yes to Jesus, I had all kinds of friends. I don't run with a single one of them today. You know why that is? Because the, the true gospel always separates. They either got tired of hearing about Jesus or they just didn't want to be around. Come on. Or they got converted to Jesus. Come on. Then we'll say it again. They either got, they either got tired of hearing about Jesus or they converted to Christianity. They gave their heart to Jesus. There is no middle ground. There's no, I'm going to, I'm going to run with them and I'm going to run with him. Jesus said, because you're lukewarm, because you straddle the fence, because you can't make up your mind, because you want to live one foot in the world and one foot in the gospel. He says, you make me sick. You make my stomach churn. You make me want to throw up. Come on. He says, you're lukewarm. You're like a, you're like a bad stale cup of coffee that nobody wants to drink. Nobody desires it. Nobody wants wants it. Nobody wants the taste of it. But come on, I serve a gospel in which David said, taste of the Lord and see that he is good. My, I serve a gospel that Jesus said, if any man leaves father and if any man forsakes mothers and fathers and lands and 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 brothers and sisters and friends, if any man forsakes these things for the gospel of the kingdom, he said, then he will be blessed in this lifetime and that lifetime to come. Yeah, I may not be running with some folks I used to run with, but I'm going to tell you something. I run with some new folks. Now, I'm talking about folks that are full of the Holy Ghost. People, I got some folks that are full of faith, folks that believe in casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. Come on, somebody. And folks that are in the same boat that I'm in and want to see a mighty move and shaking of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you that have, I'm going to ask you something tonight. Have you count the cost of the cross or have you embraced the false gospel tonight? Come on, lift your hands right where you're at. Father, I thank you for every individual under the sound of my voice tonight. God, I've preached what you've put on my heart tonight. I've delivered the word that's been burning in my heart like Jeremiah. And he said that it was like a fire that was shut up in his bones and he could not contain it. Father, I have delivered that which you've entrusted me to deliver to the people tonight. Now I'm asking that the sweet, precious Holy Spirit would begin to convict hearts tonight. Father, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, watching live by Facebook, watching by the replay by YouTube or the replay here on Facebook. Lord, if they're straddling the fence, Lord, they have received a false sense or a false gospel, Lord, and it's shaken them to the core. They, it's shaken them to the core because they have experienced, they've experienced persecutions, they've experienced trials, they've experiences, they've experienced rejections and these things. They have turned back to the world. They have backslid because no one 
set them up. No one prepared them for the truth of the gospel father i'm asking god that you begin to restore them back to the faith tonight lord you love them and you desire that they come unto you lord you said in this world we shall have tribulation but be of good cheer for you have overcome the world you said many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord he delivers us out of them all father i thank you lord I thank you, for the, Father, for all the bruises, the cuts, the scrapes, and the scars that I have. Because every scar that I look at, I can look at it with assurance and say, Lord, that was a painful season, and that was a painful time. But look what the Lord has done. Look what He has brought me from. Look what He's brought me out of. Look how I've come through hell and high water and come out on the other side with a testimony, with a message of deliverance, with a message of hope for somebody that's watching this tonight. I come by to tell somebody tonight, if you choose to live godly, you choose to, ch to, to follow after Christ, you are going to suffer persecution. But listen, friend, you don't have to do it alone. You're not in this thing alone. You've got brothers and sisters that are united with you. We're holding, we're locking arms with you. We're in the trenches with you. The same trials that you're going through, we're going through. The same trials that we're going through, you're going to go through. And if we got out and came out on the other side, friends, the same Jesus that brought us through is going to bring you through too. Come on. Why why don't you come on in? Come and embrace the kingdom. Come into the kingdom. Listen, Jesus said, he never said the gates of hell would not challenge the church. He never said that a weapon wouldn't be formed. But this is what he said. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said that that weapon that's formed will not prosper. Oh, come on, somebody. Give, some, give God some glory. Give Him some praise tonight. I believe this was a word for somebody. Come on, get your chin up. Lift your head up. I know you've been going through some trials. I know you've been going through some persecution. You may have been lied on. You been, may have been slandered, rejected, smeared, whatever the case may be. But friends, Jesus is still with you. He's still with you in the trenches. He never said it would be pretty. He never said that it would be easy. But what he did say was he said, Lo, I'll be with you even until the end of the age. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, somebody. Somebody give him an amen and a thank you and a hallelujah and a praise God or something here tonight. So listen, guys, I pray that this message, I just wanted to come by tonight and encourage you. Um, I know this was some hard preaching tonight, but guys, we've got a generation out there that needs to hear this. Okay, I am not going to sit passively on the sidelines and, we're, and lose a generation to this garbage and to this ridiculous stuff that's being preached today. And they, because we, we got to know the truth. They got to know the truth. You got to know the truth. You got the, the word of the Lord says that he's raising you up to be a soldier in the, in the army of God. Okay. So again, remnantrevival.org, remnantrevival.org, endtimeheadlines.com, endtimeheadlines.org. That's where you're going to find us, guys. We have two branches of our ministry. One is the information branch. That's End Time Headlines. And we have Remnant Revival. That's our voice. That's our ministry voice. If you'd like, listen, if you've been blessed by this ministry and you'd like to follow us, that, that, those are our, those are our uh, website addresses. You can find that on Facebook Live right there underneath where it says follow us. Click on that. Subscribe, uh, subscribe to punch, uh, push notifications, email notifications. All that will get you plugged into our ministry. If you'd like to support this ministry, this ministry is a, a continual source of blessing, equipping, and edification, and you'd like to partner with us, we, we want you to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. You can click on right there under support the ministry. Click on that link right there. Click on that link, and it'll take you to a, a page where you can give electronically or you can give by check or money order. Now, you can make your check out to End Time Headlines or Remnant Revival Ministries. Again, they're the same. They're two branches of the same tree. 
Uh, the physical mailing address there is P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana. That's 47131. I want to encourage everyone, um, if this is your first time joining us, if you do not have a home church, you're physically not able to find a church. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I say this all the time, and I want to reiterate this. If you can physically find a church, get a home church, get plugged into a church, get into a group of believers that are spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled, uh, Bible-believing, doctrinally sound church with a pastor that loves the, the, the flock, he serves the church, get in a church, get plugged into it, serve that church, do that. By all means, please do that. But for whatever reason, maybe you're physically not able to. There's a lot of people, they're physically not able to join or be a part of a church. They can't drive there. They can't physically take their self there. Or if there's no spirit-filled, Bible-believing, doctrinally sound churches in your region, in your area, and you want to be a part of a group of individuals, uh, a community, we have an online uh, church, and it's called ETH Online Community Church. Uh, I, I believe Jessica's on here, and she'll put the link up there for you in here in the Facebook Live comments. You can click on that. You'll go through a screening process uh, in which uh, you'll have to answer a few questions, and then we would we would love to welcome you to that family, to our family. If you're watching by YouTube, you can click on our main website, any again, End Time Headlines or Remnant Revival, and there's going to be a little icon up right at the top of the tab, and it says eChurch. You can click on that. Listen, we got an announcement real quick. We got some announcement. We're coming back to uh, – hold on. Let me pull this up here. I'm going to make sure we got all the uh, – the, I want to get the address. I don't have the address uh, memorized, so I want to make sure we do that. Uh, hold on, let me get out of the wrong or get into the right month here. Uh, okay, um, so we are coming again to Corden, Indiana. Uh, we're coming back to Cornerstone Community Church, and for some reason, my itinerary is not pulling up. Go figure, right? Uh, let me go back here. Here we go, I can pull this up. Cornerstone Full Gospel Church, Corden, Indiana. That's where we're going to be, okay? The physical address there is 1350 North Old Highway, 135, Corden, Indiana. Now, guys, this is a Saturday night, February 23rd, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, they You can find Cornerstone Church, Corden, on Facebook. They have a Facebook page. Go and like it. You'll, uh, you'll enjoy. Uh, they have some... Uh, Pastor Tyson has some really good messages on Sunday uh, mornings and Wednesday nights as their services. Okay, I'm going to be bringing a prophetic message. So all my uh, prophetic people that likes prophetic messages, that night on, set, on Saturday, February 23rd, I'm going to bring a prophetic message. Um, so get ready. We, I've, in fact, I've got several prophetic messages that I've got in my heart right now that I'm getting put out on on paper, getting in my notes so I can preach these out. So I don't want you to think that Brother Ricky's not going to preach on end times or eschatology because I am. And, and I've, got some, I've got some stuff in the making. And one of those is we're going to bring that uh, live Saturday night in, in Corden on that Saturday night. So I know some of you have been asking um, if, there, if there's hotels in that area. I'm going to put this on my main website. I just now realized in our, on our main website at Remnant Revival, we don't have this up on our on our main website page so we're going to get that up there and all that information uh will be there for you and available for you so look we love you guys we appreciate you taking the time out on this monday night and spending 40 minutes with us uh and we had a good time i believe some people got touched here tonight um we're going to take off tomorrow guys and we're going to be back on here lord willing on wednesday listen i'm going to finish up i'm going to do the second part to the message I did last week on every man's battle, why every man should make a covenant with his eyes. We did the first part, and I gave you the first five reasons, and I'm going to give you six through ten, uh, six th through ten on Wednesday, Lord willing. And uh, you don't want to miss this, okay? So we really plowed on the men on on last week, so we're going to talk to the ladies a little bit on uh, on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So you don't want to miss this. Um, tag some folks and let them know about this 
let them know because for those that enjoyed the first part of this message, you're going to enjoy the second part. So we're going to finish that up on Wednesday. So God bless you guys. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.